Foster Fabian, Crespo Fernandez, Bayesian estimation of ETOS models using our standard. Yes. Well, my native language, of, uh, I'm a PhD student in applied mathematics in Ecuador. My native language is not is English, so any mistake? Forgive me. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the, uh, the model that I uh, well, uh, implemented in Nerstam is for predicting aftershock after a big er er earthquake. And you, as you know, in, uh, in Ecuador, there have been uh, four mega earthquakes in the last century. This is uh, the base, the actual days of the mega earthquakes. I mean, below. Uh, um, 1906, 1932, 1958, and 1979. And then in 2016, there was a 7.8 uh, big earthquake. So the, the result were there were uh, a lot of a lot of death, a lot of uh, a lot of damage in Ecuador. Um, they are still recovering, recovering of this disaster. This is the, the map. And that's from, you can see the, the four mega earthquake in the last century, distributed in the coast in Nepal. This is the Google, the Google Maps, representing the, the aftershock of the mega earthquake in 2016. You, you can see the, the, the fault, I mean this is the fault that uh, where uh, the, the Pacific plate encounters the, omit the, 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 the continental plate. Here you have the distribution of the earthquakes in the coast of Ecuador uh, by, by the color. Uh, I mean, the, the bigger the bigger the circle is the, the more magnitude that has the, the earthquake. So. Oh, let me let me do that. I know it's this the last presentation. You must be exhausted, but let me introduce a, a little bit of mathematics about the. Point processes and, and, and the mathematics uh, that are used for, for the Earth time model. Well, uh, there's uh, this empirical model of Omori. It uh, represents the number of, uh, the, describe the, the, the decreasing intensity of earthquake after a big earthquake. You have T, that is the time, you have K and C, that is the constant, and you have this uh, power law, you have this power, P. And uh, the, the, the earthquake intensity goes, uh, is a decreasing, uh, is a decreasing exponential at the power law. So this is a, a, an empirical law, it's not proven. Uh, but it is a, one, of the, one of the first models that, uh, that they are using seismology. The other, the other uh, empirical law that are, are commonly used in seismology is the Gutenberg region law. That is a, a it models the, the, uh, the number n, I mean the number of earthquakes of uh, magnitude bigger than your threshold. That is, I mean the, the logarithm in base, in base 10 of this number is like a, a linear regression of the magnitude of the threshold. I mean the, the bigger the threshold, the less, the less, the less number of, of uh, earthquakes beyond or greater than that, this magnitude. And this implies that we have a power law, that is exponential, for the distribution of magnitudes by the Gutenberg region law. So in this case, we use the, the data and um, apply linear regression and estimated the, the coefficient A and the coefficient uh, B. This coefficient in regression, uh, this is, a, this is a, the graph of the number of events of magnitude greater than a threshold, and we have here the threshold. We have the regression, if it's one of R squared almost one. The ETAS model. The ETAS model is stands for epidemic type after two segments. It's invented by, it's invented by Ogata, Yoshihiko Ogata. He's a Japanese, Japanese researcher. And it models the, the seismicity with two components. The component mu, that is a background seismicity, that is, that is not induced by previous events. And the induces seismicity with this sum over the events that were previously that previous occurred. I mean t t j less than t. So we have here 
the user simplicity and the background simplicity. We have two components and GT, we have GT that is the distribution, the distribution density of the occurrence times of the events triggered by previous earthquakes. So this model is only temporal. It only takes uh, into account the, ten, the times that the event occurs. It doesn't take into account the magnitude or the position where the earthquake occurs. So it's not complete, it's a, it's a first model, but uh, ETA's model is like a flexible one. You can add something, you can add, add uh, magnitudes, you can add uh, positions, you can add uh, the depth of the, of the earthquake. We're gonna get to that. Well, uh, and in the first place, mu, the background intensity is considered a constant, but in, in the general way, general model, it is dependent on x and y. I mean the position, uh, it's, not, it's not constant. But in general, this, uh, induces, uh, this background simplicity is considered a, a constant multiplied by this function that depends on, depends on x and y. <coughs> when you think about the magnitudes, you add this term here. This term here is the distribution of the magnitudes of the earthquakes. And then you have the previous, the previous term, the previous term. This is a, a, a more complex model that takes account time and only magnitudes of the events during time. The stability of the model. Well, when I was implementing this in Earth time, the, the Earth half um, gave me uh, some values that are not possible. I mean, 2,000. And the problem was that the stability of the model. The stability means that you have this count, this, uh, this number n, that is the expected number of descendants of a part of events that is calculated for this integral here. And this n, this number one, this number n has to be less than one because if you, if one event induces another event, and this event induces another event, uh, the process never ends, so it propagates in the indefinitely. So you have to you have to you have to have this n less than one. And if you uh, uh, do some algebra for this formula, you get that this is uh, the real value of n. Of n. And if you think uh, you think into account that uh, m max the, the maximum magnitude of the earthquake is infinite, you get this approximation. This approximation where you can see that n is less than one if is infinite if p is less than one or uh, alpha is greater than greater than equal greater than theta. So in the in the earth time implementation of, the, of this model, we have to take into account that p has to be greater than one in order to have a finite number of n, that is the branching, that is the branching number, I mean the, the it's, a, it's a branching process, because n is the, the number of descendant of a, an earthquake, so we have to take p greater than one, and the, this uh, alpha has to be less than beta. Well, uh, the eta model stability uh, have to uh, have to be have to be less than one, so we have to add this constant here, p minus one, c p minus one to the to this to the to the uh, constant k in order to, to have this condition that is n less than equal to one. So first, uh, how do you how do you um, how do we uh, get the parameters? Well, we, if you use as a, we uh, maximize the log of the line group. The log of the line group has these analytical closure forms that you. Can see here, and we have Earth time. We have Earth time. The problem with uh, the code or Earth time it was that it was not converging because of the, as you can see in the formula, you have t minus t, tj. I mean, for a, for, a, for each uh, earthquake, you have to uh, calculate the difference of in time for this earthquake to the previous earthquake. So it's, uh, the order of this algorithm is n squared. So it's not so in, in every iteration of. Uh, of macro change in Earth time. So I have to make a preprocessing where I can pass this code, the different, the time difference, the time difference between each, between each earthquake times uh, with respect to the to the previous one. I mean, I made an, 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 an array of order n times n minus one uh, divided by two, and this I pass it to the to the code, and this uh, with this I I I manage to the code uh, converge. I mean, uh, 
Uh, this, this, uh, I mean, uh, I, I try, I try space. I have an enormous, an enormous array of, of order n times n minus one over two, but I get a time that we can expect. We can uh, wait. I mean, uh, the code uh, runs for two hours. In this case, um, three hours or four hours for spatiotemporal models. I mean, this is a, this is this is a model where it, you take into account times and magnitudes. Nor, nor, nor uh, the position of the of the earthquakes yet. So this code, uh, I will be posting it. So you can, and also the data. This is uh, the temporal model and the temporal considering the magnitudes. Uh, the the the, the priors were uh, weakly informative. I mean, uh, we have we have exponential distribution, exponential distribution for all the parameters. But we have a lower a lower bound of a, a value close to one for p because remember p has to be greater than a, a greater than one in order to get a convergence because n has to be finite. So, uh, spatial temporal models. If you take into account now the position of the earthquake, you have this model that takes into account the the distribution of the magnitudes of the earthquakes and also the position with this term here. But this term, as you can see, is based on Euclidean distance. I mean, x squared plus g uh, y squared. So it's, it's not uh, anisotropic, it's isotropic. I mean, it depends on, uh, in every direction, it's the same. So it only depends on Euclidean distance. But as you can see, as you can uh, see, uh, this is not always true because the, the distribution of the uh, earthquakes uh, is anisotropic because you have a fault where the, the plates meet and uh, there is no way you can you can get uh, isotropy in, in, in this problem. So this is the first problem that is isotropic problem, but we can get to an isotropic version of this. This is a, this, this is an isotropic spatial temporal at etas. I mean you can see here a, a metric that is defined from this matrix. This matrix is a positive definite symmetric matrix that represents the covariance covariance matrix for the for the cluster associated with the big earthquake. How do you get the cluster? Well, uh, Susan Holmes, the Professor Susan Holmes was talking about clustering this morning. Uh, how do you get the cluster? Well, uh, there was invented this method, this MBC. MBC is uh, stand for magnitude-based cluster. That is uh, a way to uh, make a clustering, a cluster method associated with, uh, with each earthquake. The, me the method is based on that. Well, as you can see, the distribution of the earthquake in Ecuador was anisotropic. You know, it's not, uh, it's not, it, it's an, an ellipse, nor a circle. As you can see, the, the eigenvalues of the matrix was the, the axis, the two axes of the distribution of the earthquakes after the bigger earthquake of, of uh, on April 16. So, NBC. NBC is a method, it's a method that is used in Japan. Japan is uh, one of the most advanced uh, places in the world for uh, earthquake collection because for certain reasons. Um, MBC is based on magnitude-based uh, clustering. I mean, you get an earthquake that is not in any cluster, and then you you put in the same cluster uh, every earthquake that is um, this has uh, an upsu a special distance from the from the from the main earthquake, and then also in time. You take into account these times. I mean, uh, you have a, a window, a window time for including the other earthquakes that are not included yet in any cluster in the same cluster that the, the earthquake that you are analyzing. So, with this method, I I made this cluster here. That is anisotropic, as I said, because the matrix is not symmetric. Well, uh, for the clustering, once I get that the, I, I use the this MBC method, I realize that we have to uh, feed bivariate uh, a normal model, a normal uh, distribution, and I use these four these four choices for the for the for the normal variant distribution for the earthquake in the same cluster. So I use this where you have x1 and x1 is the position of the cluster main, er, main earthquake. I mean, remember that in MBC you have an earthquake and you add another earthquake that are not previous in any earthquake to this cluster 
if you have a window, a, a window, a time window space, and um, and also by the UXU uh, distance. So in, in, if you, when you have the the airplane in the same cluster, you fit these four choices of bivariate normal models, and you decide what is the best according to well, this is a this is just, just the the variance, the variance calculated from the from data and the correlation. Well, this is the formula. Never mind that. But you choose one of which which of the, of the formulas you, uh, is the best by the Akaki information criteria. This one. This one taking into account the, the determinant of the of this matrix and the k is a number of parameters. And then when you have the, the matrix calculated, you normalize this matrix by this formula. In order to get the determinant, you normalize this this matrix. Well, there's a, a, a last there's a last a method, there's a last eta model that is hypocentral. Hypocentral takes into account the position and also the depth, because uh, there was uh, this pattern in Ecuador that all the earthquake that uh, produced uh, damage zero damage zero zero damage on Ecuador was uh, between uh, a layer a seismogenic layer. Of uh, 30 kilometers, so I, I think to account also in this ETA model is very recent. It's from 2015, and it takes account the also the depth by the beta distribution. You have here the beta distribution. I also fit this in in, in, in Earth time. Well, the code, but uh, why why this 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 uh, these models are different from the others? Well, the, in the others, the log of the likelihood has a close Form, but this this one doesn't have a closed form. You have to you have to approximate this integral, this integral here, this total integral, and S is the area where all the earthquakes are considered. So S could be could be maybe a, a, a rectangle or maybe could be a circle. So in this case of uh, isotropic and anisotropic, you have I approximate this S. With a circle, but uh, I use this algorithm. Uh, maybe you can know it. You can, you can, you can, you may know it because uh, it's very useful. Uh, it's a, it's a minimum cover circle. It's a, it's a kind of all, but, uh, and uh, it's an incremental algorithm that uh, goes from that calculates the circle that the minimum cover circle for n n points. I mean uh, the area where the the uh, of Ecuador is very is very uh, is very small. So so you can approximate you can neglect the curve, the the radius of the of the Earth and calculate this as a, as a plane. I mean uh, as a as a flat surface. So in, in this case the the s the s in this double integral can be approximated with a circle. So I use this algorithm to approximate this double integral. I mean, to get a pro an approximation of the log of the likelihood, and this water formula. This is the approximation. I wrote it out. I mean, the algebra for this. And um, here R is the radius of the minimum covering circle, and R i is the greatest distance between earthquake i and the previous earthquake in the same cluster. So, uh, with, with uh, centering each earthquake, you calculate for the cluster the maximum distance from this earthquake. To the previous earthquake in the same cluster, and this is Ri that depends on the of the of each earthquake. Yeah. So I made this formula and the code. Well, the code are uh, if you have a isotropic, isotropic the, the, the the distance the medium distance, and you have an isotropic, then you have this matrix, the matrix associated with the with the with the cluster. Remember, you you fit four four models, four choice models for the bivariate normal distribution. And this induces a metric. Well, the preprocessing, preprocessing, as I, as I can say, as I can say, wait, yeah. The, the preprocessing, as I can say, was uh, a star n. I made a, a, free, a free difference arise, calculated the, the time difference between each earthquake and the previous earthquake, and also the latitude difference and the longitude difference. Uh, we have three arise of the of of the of, 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 of order n times n minus one over two. And this is the air, the star, and end position of each of the difference of the earthquake. I mean, if you have an earthquake I, the difference with respect to the previous one are in this position, as between these indices in the right. So it's, this is the code. This is the code for anisotropic. It's very long. As I can say, uh, as, I, as I said, the 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 the, the 
requires more exponential. The exponential is very weak, weakly informative for all the parameters. I will, I will post the code. <laughs> Sorry. 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 Just conclusion you have? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, the conclusion. Uh, uh, I, yeah. I, uh, I, I, I obtain a, 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 an approximation of the background intensity. I mean, I, I can predict, maybe, I, can, I, I, could, predict, I could predict the, the background intensity in Ecuador, in the, in the course of Ecuador. And also the, in, the trigger intensity, I mean the intensity provoked by previous earthquakes. I mean you can see that there are some that are more likely to, to have a, a bigger quake. I mean this this area here. And this is the total intensity. I mean intensity with the sum of background intensity and inducing in, in, in intensity. This is a, a red. Yeah, it's, uh, right. Thank our speaker.